and welcome to my channel. This video is a summary of my research paper, Attacks and Mitigation Techniques on Direct Device-to-Device -device Communication Sublayers of a 5G Networks. I hope you find it interesting and informative. The new 5G network specifications have created the potential for a greatly expanded cellular network that will support network virtualization, gigabit data speeds, low latency, and expanded device-to-device -device communications. New use cases are being researched for device-to-device -device communications that include the areas of medical devices, automotive, and the Internet of Things. The new use cases demand high availability and integrity with low latency. This will require new technologies to achieve the new specifications and maintain the security of the device-to-device -device communications. This presentation combines research technology of high-speed signature, frequency hopping, and two-fish encryption with a new technology, antenna addressing, to create a new HAFE communications architecture. HAFE has the potential to increase security for device-to-device -device communications while meeting the new demands of 5G device-to-device -device communications. This presentation is organized as follows. The introduction continues with an overview of 5G technologies and current wireless D2D communication technologies. Related research in the areas of authentication, antenna hardware, and D2D communication protocols. The main body covers threats and mitigation techniques, which include the proposed HAFE communication architecture. Proposed additional areas of research for the HAFE communication architecture. The presentation conclusion is followed by the references used for the presentation. 5G is the fifth generation cellular network. It is the fifth major update to wireless or cellular service specifications. 5G networks will operate using both the traditional model incorporating a base station or transmitter that sends and receives information from devices. The base station is connected to a network backbone. 5G networks will give devices the ability to connect directly with one another using D2D technology. Ultra-reliable low-latency connections are a cornerstone new technology that will be available in 5G networks. Latency has two aspects, access time and end-to-end -end latency. The new 5G specification calls for a latency of less than one millisecond. 5G networks will operate in two primary frequency ranges in the U.S., below 6 GHz and above 6 GHz using millimeter wave technology. The use of millimeter wave technology will create a need for a new antenna array to send and receive data. 5G devices will need to have multiple antenna arrays in order to maintain radio network availability. Qualcomm is recommending at least four antenna arrays for 5G devices. The antenna arrays will need to support beam steering and tracking for the millimeter wave transmissions. The new specifications from the third generation partnership project, 3GPP, specify bandwidth of 1 to 10 gigabytes per second, wireless network virtualization, and the ability to support high device density in metro applications. There will be many new use cases for D2D communications. Research has begun for medical devices, automotive, and the expansion of Internet of Things devices and capabilities. Rahimi et al. propose a new layer model for 5G networks. This model is divided into eight interconnected layers that facilitate two-way data exchange. The new model is designed to take advantage of the 5G IoT architecture and will make it simple and convenient for scalability, analysis, and modularity. The layers include the physical device layer, the communications layer which contains direct device-to-device -device communications and connectivity sublayers, edge computing layer, the data storage layer, Management Service Layer, which contains the sublayers for network management, 
cloud computing and data analytics, application layer, the collaboration and processing layer, and the security layer. This presentation will concentrate on the direct device to device communications sublayer. Wireless device to device direct communication has been around for more than 100 years in various forms. It can be defined as direct communication between two devices or users where the data does not traverse a base station or use the core network. This definition does not specify that the signal is analog or digital. The analog versions of this technology are still in use today. Walkie-talkies and CB radios are the most common examples of D2D analog technology. This presentation will concentrate on digital D2D communications in the 5G cellular frequency spectrum. D2D use cases for communications have a number of benefits over the traditional base station cellular model. D2D communications offer improved spectral efficiency, data throughput, energy efficiency, and fairness with lower latencies. Current D2D technologies include Bluetooth, Wi-Fi Direct, and LTE Direct. These technologies differ in data rates, distance between communication devices, and device discovery mechanisms which are illustrated in the table. LTE Advanced Communication Model utilizes a base station and ProSE protocols to initiate and maintain a session. This model does not meet the speed and latency specifications for 5G D2D communications. The paper, To Trust or Not to Trust, Data Origin Authentication for Group Communications in 5G Networks, addresses the need for faster authentication schemes for group communications and suggests three possible schemes that could be used, timed-based asymmetry, hybrid asymmetry, or high-speed signature schemes. They detailed the specification for each scheme and concluded that group communications in 5G networks must use core network resources efficiently and reliably. Based on use case and research, any of the three authentication methods outlined in the paper would meet or exceed the current 3GPP specifications. Kleinovisky et al.'s paper proposes the creation of millimeter wave 5G antenna that allows for a broad radiation pattern for wide angle beam steering of the signal. The antenna would allow for simultaneous operation with two orthogonal linear polarizations from the antenna array. The proposed antenna array would use phase shifters for each element of the antenna array to overcome the limitations of directional millimeter wave signal loss. Qualcomm has announced that it will begin producing its 5G millimeter wave antenna and modem in the first or second quarter of 2019. This antenna array and modem that have been announced as the antenna hardware for the first 5G devices that will come to market. Qualcomm's antenna array will also f feature beam forming technologies. In the paper, Scalable MAC Protocol for D2D Communications for Future 5G Networks, Ismail et al. propose a new approach to D2D communications and present a scalable MAC protocol for these communications based on the point coordination function access mechanism. The researchers divide 5G communication into three tiers in dense heterogeneous networks. The legacy LTE cellular network is Tier 1 and covers traditional communications from a cell tower or macro base station. Tier 2 is a dense heterogeneous network that is physically close together in a single room or small building that uses a WLAN base station to connect to the 5G network cell tower. Tier 3 has very close D2D -D communication between two devices without any type of base station. The point coordination function access mechanism is a polling based scheme designed to check the channel conditions and connect users with the best possible coverage. Each user is assigned a time slot either from the macro base station or WLAN base station depending on their tier assignment. The base station can then sense when the channel is idle for devices, calculate the SNR for each user in its vicinity, create a polling list using the SNR. The base stations will 
be able to sense the type of communications and prioritize by types of data and SNR. 5G specifications call for a greater density of devices on the 5G network. New D2D use cases such as medical devices, automotive, and IoT for 5G networks will greatly expand the number of devices on the network while potentially decreasing the traffic load on the cell towers or base stations. Eliminating the base station from the communications architecture model increases the potential for cyber attacks on D2D communication as it eliminates traditional authentication and verification methods. There are four known and documented threat types for D2D uh, communications. Man-in-the-middle attacks occur when two devices are communicating directly with one another. The attacker will present fake communication node to each of the victim's devices. The victim's communication is then routed through the fake node without their knowledge. All information that is communicated between the victims is captured by the fake node and altered before the fake node sends the communication on to the victim's devices. The victims are unaware of this attack. Eavesdropping attack is similar to man in the middle. The fake node captures the information but does not alter it. The victims are also unaware of this type of attack. Denial of service attack is the type when the attacker seeks to deny service to the victim by flooding the network with a large quantity of network service requests. The victim is aware of this type of attack. A replay attack uses a valid data packet captured in an eavesdropping attack to open a valid communication sectum session with the victim's device. The victim can then be fooled into divulging information or giving access to network resources. Mitigation techniques for the D2D communication sublayer attack types have been well documented for traditional wired and wireless communication networks. The new 5G specifications call for greatly expanded use cases, ultra-low latency, the use of millimeter wave technology, and the automatic offloading of communication from the base stations to D2D communications where appropriate. The traditional mitigation methods need to be modified to meet the new 5G specifications. The four technologies, high-speed signature, antenna addressing, frequency hopping, and encryption, will be used together to create a new communication architecture, HAFE, for DDD communications designed to meet the 5G, 3G, PP specifications and secure the network from the previously identified attack types. The proposed communication architecture will utilize a 5G base station to initialize the D2D communication sessions between two devices. High-speed signature schemes should be used in D2D communications as it removes the need for each datagram to be individually signed, reducing the computational overhead for the communication session. An elliptical curved signature scheme would be capable of achieving the high speeds needed for 5G authentication without compromising security. Frequency hopping spread spectrum is a technology that rapidly changes the frequency that the carrier is using to transmit data. This technology has been used extensively in wireless communications and is a mature and trusted technology. The increase in frequency range of 5G into the millimeter wave spectrum will allow for more frequency possibilities, increasing the effectiveness of this technology. The two-fish symmetric key encryption cipher will be used to encrypt the data between the two devices. Two-fish has been shown to be a strong cipher, is a well-known and mature technology, and is regarded as one of the fastest encryption ciphers. It is free to use and can be used in both hardware and software. This presentation proposes identifying each antenna array with a unique antenna array address similar to a MAC address that is used for IEEE 802 network technologies. Qualcomm recommends a minimum of four antenna arrays per 5G device. Each device would have a unique antenna array address for each antenna array, or a minimum of four per 5G device. The antenna addressing scheme will leverage the point coordination function to sense the network and determine which of the antenna arrays and which frequency will be used to broadcast and receive the D2D communication. 
The antenna array address and frequency channel will be encrypted and sent via a base station when the communication session is initiated and authenticated. The DDD communication session will broadcast the encrypted data from the identified active antenna array. The unused or inactive antenna arrays will broadcast a false or deceptive signal simultaneously. The DDD communication devices will only listen to the active antenna array address and discard the false signals. The proposed HAFE communications architecture will decrease the possibility of man-in-the-middle, eavesdropping, and replay attacks by increasing the number of communications that need to be captured and interpreted by an attacker. In a traditional D2D, the active antennas are known and there's only one communication session to capture. In the proposed HAFE architecture, the attacker would need to listen to n to the power of r communication paths, where n is the number of antenna arrays and r is the number of arrays on each device that are used for communication. In the minimum proposed configuration from Qualcomm, with four antenna arrays per device, that would be 16 communication combinations that the attacker would need to capture and interpret in order to compromise the communication. This would force the attacker to have equipment that is able to capture multiple signals simultaneously and break the encryption. The proposed HAFE communication scheme has the potential to eliminate or greatly reduce real-time man-in-the-middle attacks for d to d communications. There are three areas of research that need to be completed for the implementation of this protocol. One, encryption schemes for the false signal. The wrong encryption scheme for the false signal has the potential to compromise the original communications. Several different schemes should be tested and evaluated. 2. The effects of moving devices utilizing HAFE such as automobiles. Device movement may force D2D &D communications to use different antenna arrays on the device for optimal performance. 3. The number of the optimal number of antenna arrays per device needed for security and performance. Increasing the number of antenna arrays will increase security but may decrease device performance. 5G DDD communications will become commercially available in 2019. The new use cases for the technology in the medical device, automotive, and Internet of Things will bring about an increased threat level. The new standards for latency and speed are creating a need for new and more secure D2D &D communications architecture. The HAFE scheme proposed in this presentation addresses the need for more secure and faster communications by leveraging the existing technologies of high-speed signature for authentication, two-fish for encryption, and frequency hopping with a new concept of antenna addressing to create a more secure and fast D2D communication standard.